there, fellow Dice Masters. This is Diane, and welcome to DM Dice Masters. Today I'd like to show you what to consider when building a Dice Masters team. Constructing a team can sometimes be difficult for newer players. It can be easy to get caught up in all the big flashy cards to where you might overlook other tools that will help make your team successful. While there are always exceptions, there are certain fundamentals that you will typically want to include to make sure your team is optimal. First up, and probably the most important, is your win condition. This is ideally what will help you win the game. The strategy for coming up with your win condition can vary depending on the format of the event. For example, you might look for something completely different for a rainbow draft than you would for a constructed event. For this video, we will imagine that we are building a team for an open constructed event. There are several different types of win conditions to suit your preferred style of play. Say you like to come at your opponent guns blazing. Then you might prefer to go aggro or aggressive and play something like Guy Gardner, the Rare Lantern Ring, the Half Elf Bard, or Vicious Struggle. Or perhaps you prefer to slowly lock your opponent down like a boa constrictor. Then you might prefer to go control and play something like Jinzo, Oracle, Constantine, or Dwarf Wizard. Then there are teams that consist of a combination of the two. For my example, I will pick the preferred play style of my husband, Easy Breezy, or as he likes to call it, I want to play something where I don't have to think too much. For his win condition, his go-to card is Angel Soaring. Angel is nice because he's a low-cost, easy-to-purchase character who is unblockable if you play an action during your turn. This brings us to the next fundamental of team building, including the things that will help support your win condition. This can of course vary depending on what your win condition is. For example, Perhaps you need to include a form of overcrush on your team in order to make a character really shine, like Ultron Drone. Then you might want to include anger issues. Because Angel's ability needs an action to be played in order for his unblockable ability to trigger, my husband usually prefers to choose a basic action that will allow him to increase attack stats. There are many options to choose from, but his preferred basic action is Heroic Defense. We will get back to why in just a moment. For his second basic action, my husband likes to go with Big Entrance. This is so he can purchase his Angel Dice more quickly for a discount, while having the added advantage of being able to place those dice directly into his bag. Because the team is going to rely on several basic actions being purchased, Red Dragon is added to the team in order to provide cost reduction with his Global. The global is nice because it will also allow him to get some early damage in on his opponent. The next fundamental to consider are the potential weaknesses to your win condition. While it's not possible to foresee and protect yourself against all possible counters to your win condition, it is good practice to try and consider the most likely threats. Some of the potential weaknesses against unblockable angel are dwarf wizard, distraction, Transfer Power, Imprisoned, and Jinzo. There are certainly more, but these are probably the most common. To help fortify his team, my husband likes to include control characters such as Dwarf Wizard, Constantine, and Oracle. Each of these characters provides different levels of protection and or control. Next up, Elf Thief is thrown into the mix in order to stifle his opponent's ramp. This will also reduce the amount of energy at their disposal to potentially use globals against him. Another fundamental for any team is some form of ramp. This is a means of adding more dice to your rolls than the normal four you would typically be rolling. While there are a few different methods of ramp, by far the most common is the Professor X global. For this team, my husband chose to include Professor X trainer. The final character that is included on this team is Clay Golem with its Fabricate ability. He provides a way to KO the Elf Thief dice each turn and thus provide a means of being able to constantly refield them. And if they come up energy, that's okay too. 
the masks can be used for Professor X fuel. Now let's get back to the basic action heroic defense that was mentioned earlier. The reason my husband decided to include that card, as opposed to other cards that could boost Angel's stats by even more, is because it includes a life gain ability. This works perfectly for his team because he will want to be KOing his Elf Thief dice with Clay Golem at every opportunity in order to take full advantage of their ability. The combination of Elf Thief, Clay Golem, and Heroic Defense creates a nice synergy for the team. All of these elements working together are another fundamental of building a Dice Master's team, including characters and or actions that will support your team. Now that we have covered the basics of what to keep in mind when building a team, the final fundamental is practice. Next to your win condition, practicing your team is the most important thing you can do. The first thing I recommend doing is taking your team through several solo turns. This will help you to perfect not only your buy order, but will prepare you for what to do when the dice gods suddenly turn on you and your rolls don't go the way you were hoping. Once you've done that, the next thing to do is playtest the team against other players. See what works and what doesn't. This is necessary for discovering any weaknesses that might have been overlooked, and then adjust accordingly. So let's do a brief review of all of the fundamentals. First up, we had figuring out your win condition. Second, we had supporting your win condition. Third, protection against your win condition's potential weaknesses. Fourth, a method of ramp for your team. Fifth, including elements that will add synergy to your team. And finally, practice, practice, practice. So there you have it, fellow Dice Masters. Those are the fundamentals to consider the next time you sit down to construct a team. Once again, this is Diane, and thanks for watching DM Dice Masters. Take care.